Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're back here with League of Dungeoneers, and we have the introductory quest set up. It's called First Blood, and it's designed to just give us a little bit of an idea of how the game works, how initiative works, how combat works, with some of the parameters of the dungeons taken out, like the event roll and that kind of thing. So, uh, we have the quest set up just like the game tells us to set it up in the introductory section. We'll go ahead and read the flavored text of that and get started. First things first though, we do have um, a randomized enemy placement here right at the beginning. So, use a d10, so what I did just added a d4 to that roll with the d10 and the d6. Just for us to know where we're going to put people and we chose four quadrants and we you know chose six for one side and the 12 for the other or the 10 for the other i should say that let us know where our enemies are being placed they're kind of spread out all over the place the bandit leader is way back here we have three bandits one of them has a ranged weapon so here we go here's their cards we're told to get the monster cards and put them all together this is the bandit leader he's got a combat skill of 60 a range skill of 40 he does an extra damage a resolve of 50 his dex is 35 his movement is four his natural armor is one and he's negative 10 to hit so we've taken his natural armor and the armor that the setup tells us he has and taken one of these nifty little reminder cards or aids to show us how much armor he has he also has negative five to hit due to his shield so overall we've got 15 taken away from our skill in order to try to hit him he is rocking a long sword so he does 1d12 damage and the other three enemies we have on the board here are bandits regular bandits not leaders they have a cs of 50 range skill of 35 no extra damage 45 resolve, 30 dex, 4 movement, just like our heroes and the leader. No natural armor, and negative 5 to hit. There's also not any extra armor that's been added to them from the scenario setup. So, two of them have a short sword, which is a d6 plus 2. And the other guy, the ranged guy, has a short bow, which does a damage of a d8. They can reload it, uh, which costs 1 action point and he also has a dagger if he needs to get up close and personal so that is what we're working with we've set aside all of the pogs within the activation bag four plus one for natural leader for the heroes and then four one for each enemy plus two for the surprise attack that they're doing against us so the heroes have traveled for days and are finally nearing their destination in the village. After so long on the road, the idea of sleeping in a real bed at an inn is alluring. However, with the sun setting, you realize you must spend one more night out in the open. You find a suitable spot and make camp. You take turns to keep watch, and as usual, nothing much happens during the night. Just before dawn, though, the hero on watch is suddenly snapped into high alert by the faint sound of stealthy footsteps. Realizing the potential peril, he quickly tries to wake the rest of the party as they fumble to rise, a gang of bandits charge out of the darkness. So the party has been attacked by three bandits and one bandit leader. And we've showed you all the ways that we set up there. We've put the corresponding monster cards together, the equipment cards. We've combined them to represent the above-mentioned adversaries. We've used these wilderness tiles and placed the heroes in the center near their campfire. So the bandits get plush two initiative tokens on their first turn as they surprise the sleeping heroes. We knew that. We said that. And due to darkness, no one can see or shoot further than 10 squares. This is the same amount of range you have within a dungeon. And the scenario die is not in use. So our uh, objective here is just to take out four bandits. And this might be easier said than done because there's a lot of rolling, a lot of dice, and a lot of things that can go wrong. But we're up to the challenge so to get started, we need to simply grab the initiative bag and draw a token. If we draw a black token, that means an enemy is going to go. A white token means a hero is going to go. So first up, we have an enemy. We'll put this to the side. And the first thing we want to check is this handy enemy activation card. So we activate enemies in this order. First up, we want to activate a magic user or an enemy armed with a ranged weapon who has not gone. And sure enough, we have an enemy with a ranged weapon, our guy with a short bow over here, who has not gone. So he's going to go first. After we check that card to see who we're activating, we look at the behavior card 
And this is going to be a behavior card for a humanoid with a missile weapon. So he's got some basic rules. And then we have a, a table here to show us what actions they might take on their turn if we get down to that point. So first we want to look and see if they're within two spaces of a hero. We want to move them up to their movement, which again is four away. But remain in line of sight. And then we'll reload at the same time. They don't need to reload every figure, every enemy or hero that has a ranged weapon begins with a loaded weapon. You've got these handy tokens here to remind you of that. So we don't need to do that. We don't need to reload our missile weapon. That's the second thing we would do. We can also move up to movement spaces to get in a position that increases its odds to hit, including climbing objects. We're going to skip this rule if we've done anything above and we haven't. So enemies have two action points, just like heroes do. And so for the first action, I believe we'll use four movement points, one, two, three, four, to get here. And then um, we could move again, but we'd only get to use half of our movement. Um, and I think we can shoot from there though. We have, are within one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and in fact, we could have shot from farther back, but we're gonna try to clear line of sight. Line of sight is counted from the center of a square in a straight line to the center of your target square, and it looks like we've got no obstructions there. There's a large table within the book that tells you all of the things you have to consider if you are looking for line of sight. For example, there's plus 10 added to a roll if you're um, shooting through a log, for example. And all these bushes and trees, I'm sure, have different things that affect them as well. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but for now, we're gonna use our second action to take a shot at the closest hero, which is our halfling rogue. So we want to take a look down at the attack section of this behavior. Whoops. Card wasn't cooperating. And you'll see here that we've got uh, 2d6. We can roll one to decide this column and one to decide this. We'll say the red goes first. And we'll take a look at what happens after we roll these. So we got a six on the red die, a two on the green. We'll look at the first column, a five or six. We actually... We'll use a special skill or talent. There are no special skills or talents here. So that means we just attack. So we need to look at the ranged skill of the bandit once again. They've got a ranged skill of 35. So we'll go ahead and roll a D100 to see if they get within a 35 and hit our halfling rogue. And what they've rolled here is an 88. The Percentile die being the first digit, the 10 being the second digit. So an 80 and an 8 means 88. So they have missed, and they need to reload their weapon next turn. That's two action points for them. We'll go back to the initiative bag and see what happens next. Next up is another enemy. So we'll go back to the enemy activation card and see, we'll move on from the magic user or ranged weapon enemy. We don't have any more of those. We need to activate next an enemy adjacent to a hero. Don't have that. There are two specific sections that mention an enemy adjacent to a hero. Then we're gonna look at an enemy closest to a hero that could charge. We don't have either of those either. A charge is a two action point move that someone can do. In order to close the gap, it has to be at least one space away from an enemy and within full movement, and then they can do a standard attack at the same time after they've closed the gap. If it's a successful attack, that means they've kind of knocked the target for a loop and they get to push them back one way. But we don't have anybody within range of full movement that will be able to do that. So that means we would use an enemy that has enough space to move its full movement, in which case we've got three of those, so we'll randomize one to three, four to six, and this guy's a little bit off the map here. Um, we'll call him seven or nine, and on 10 we'll reroll to see who gets to go and use their full movement. And it's a 10, so we'll reroll. And we'll see here that we got a two, which is going to be our leader. He'll move full movement, six spaces, two, three, four, five, six. I think you might have to double move into that, but 
we'll just call it one more move and he'll get right there. All right, and that's it for the next enemy token turn. Let's see who goes third round. Back to the bag. We've got a hero. Good. Right, so we have our first hero up. I think we're going to go ahead and take a turn with our elf ranger here. We've named Dorlin. Dorlin's the character I play within most D&D &D things. I love playing rangers, so I had to kind of move him over here to League of Dungeoneers. Just a quick reminder of what he's got here. He's got a dex of 58. That's kind of the important stat. So his combat skill was minus 5. He's got 53. But his range skill is a 78, which is pretty good. Uh, his dodge skill is 53. Across the board there, we've got 68, 22, 32, 22, 52, forging of 45. He's got a long bow, which is going to do a 1d10 damage, and he armor pierces 1. So this is a good opportunity since we've got the bandit leader in front of us. He has 2 armor, but overall a minus 15 to hit. But I think Dorlin is a good um, candidate to take a shot. We're on 2, 3, 4, 5... One, two, three, let's see. One, two, three, four, six. Uh, yeah, and line of sight. I guess it technically kind of touches this. I don't, I, I guess we have um, line of sight here without going through that log. It's a little close to call, I'm not sure, but we'll just say there's no penalty we need to look up. So yeah, we're just gonna take one shot uh, one action point, a standard attack here with our longbow, and see what happens. So, again, the range skill we have with Dorlin is 78, uh, but this is going to be at minus 15 to bring it down to a 63. So we need to get less than a 63 in order to deal some damage. And we're not going to do it with a 93. Absolutely not. So that weapon is unloaded. We'll make a note here of how many arrows we've used. We've got a total of 10. And I guess for our second action, we might just stay put there and reload our weapon. So that's it for our first hero turn. Let's go back to the bag. And we've got another enemy. So returning to the enemy activation card. Uh, we've already activated our ranged enemy. We need to activate pretty much these enemies that have enough space to move full movement. That's what we're going to do. And in fact, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and get just out of reach of melee with that character. There. All right. Back to the bag. Another enemy token. Okay, so the last guy who hasn't gone this round is going to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Begin to close the gap. We've got two more enemy tokens in here, but all the enemies have activated, so we won't need to use them. We've just got heroes left, so we can just go ahead and take three more turns with our heroes. So with that being the case, I believe we'll go ahead and do our three hero turns. I think we'll start with our halfling rogue. Let's take a look at his character sheet real quick. His name is Bomber Barry Hill, right? He's a halfling rogue. And he's got 57s for all his deck skills. 67, 41, 26, 11, 36, 35. He's using a short sword, which is a one-handed weapon. It does 1d6 plus 2 damage. Uh, it's a bonus for dual wielding, but we're not doing that at the moment. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll go ahead and do a, this is a perfect opportunity to do a charge attack. He gets a bonus uh, against backstabbing, uh, he could do some armor piercing, but um, none of these bandits have armor for the moment. He might be someone, oh, he might actually be a good person to head towards our leader if that's the case. Ah, no, we got somebody in front of us, so we'll go ahead and do a charge uh, we do have this one space in between here, which means we can do a charge, and you can only charge within a straight line, either diagonal or orthogonal, but we're lined up perfectly here. Another thing to note is we'll need to use two movement points because we're actually within the zone of control of this enemy. These are the two spaces to the left and right, and the three in front of any model. It's called the zone of control, and it um, costs two movement points to move 
into. So we're going to charge here. We get just a plus 10 to our combat skill, uh, which means we're rolling at a 57 minus the 5 we have for the to hit modifier on the bandit card. So let's see if we have that. 67 minus 5 is a 62. All right, come on, buddy. Let's see what we get here. Uh, and not going to hit with a 97, that's for sure. Right, with charge being a two action point move, we're not going to get any other actions with our halfling rogue, unfortunately. So that's it for them. Let's move on to this gentleman here, which is our dwarven warrior. That is Neely. And their skills aren't great because we rolled on the background table and got the fraud, which is minus 10 to their combat range, dodge, and resolve skills. They'll all increase when the resolve goes back up to 10. And in fact, we get 10 more when we complete that quest and 1500 XP. So with that being the case, we could go one, two, three moves and get right here in this gentleman's grill. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Or we could just go five, six and get right here into the grill of this ranged guy. And in fact, I think that's what we'll do. This is the zone of control of the ranged bandit, but we had two movement points to get into that zone there. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I think we're good. Um, that is Shale Strike's turn. And now it's time for Monty, our wizard's turn. Who's got a staff? He's got three spells. And he's got an arcane arts and wisdom of 60 and 50, respectively. So wisdom is going to be his mana pool as well, meaning we have 50 mana. So let's just think about what we want to do. Hand of Death, which is one of the three spells we picked up, is a touch spell. It's quick, but it ignores armor. So it might be worth using in order to get into the space of the bandit leader. But I kind of just like where he's at right here because he's a little squishy. We do have a flare, which is a ranged attack. Okay, a couple things to note about the spell cards. They have a type up here. We've mentioned a couple of these words as well. A quick spell means you can cast it for one action point. A magic missile means it's ranged and you don't actually have to roll a ranged attack. It just happens, barring you have line of sight. There's something called a casting value down here. This is subtracted from your arcane arts score when you're rolling for it. This is kind of the difficulty to cast it. There's also a mana cost over here, so we'll subtract this from our 50 mana once we cast it, if we do. Lastly, you have to see if the spell is a success or not, and there's such a thing as a miscast, which if we roll, we'll go into more detail there. But let's double check what these bushes do on line of sight to see if we even have line of sight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, kind of in a weird spot here. We could move here, and then we'd have line of sight. We'd move through this log. Let's see what that does. So I actually think we're gonna move around here so as to not um, we're gonna have to worry about the log, and we'll go ahead and shoot a magic missile here at the bandit leader. So it says a bright flare shoots from the caster's hand, hissing through the air to strike the target with a large bang. Damage is 1d10. I actually think we'll move one over so we don't have a straight charge here. So we're going one two, three of our movement here. All right, so we need to go ahead and roll our Arcane Arts check for the flare. Again, line of sight is needed for this, but no to hit roll is needed because of the magic missile type attack that it is. We do have a casting value of eight here on this spell. 
So with an arcane score of 60, we subtract 8 from that, meaning it's 52. But we can also increase the power of any destruction or restoration spells that we cast. Uh, with an increased miscast of minus 2, a chance of minus 2. So uh, if we're increasing the power by one level, our miscast would be 93 to 100. And uh, it also costs two more mana points to do this. So this will be a 17 cost flare with plus 1 damage. If we hit, an arcane needs to be under a 52. So here we go. And we got it with a 31. Awesome. We're going to unroll damage for that. Which damage for the flare is a d8. Plus 1 because we increased the power of it. And that is only a 1. So we're going to hit for 2. But unfortunately... It's going to bounce right off the two armor that the bandit leader has. Let's get rid of our mana and reset for the next round. Okay, so we're on to the next round here. We've removed two enemy tokens from the initiative bag because we're no longer surprised. And we've also removed one token of the heroes from the bag because we uh, only get to use our natural leader trait in the first round. So... We're ready to go. Not a great first round for us here. No damage dealt on anybody, but we're in decent position to deal with some, some enemies. So here we go. First up in round two is bad guy. So we'll look at the activation card, and our ranged enemy is going to go first. So let's look back at his behavior card. If you're within two spaces of a hero, move up two movement squares away, but remain within line of sight and reload at the same time. So they'll need to go, I guess move back. One, we're in, one, two, three. Four to stay within line of sight here and reload. So that's their go. Interestingly enough, there's no you know, opportunity attack or anything like that in this game as far as I can tell. So let's see who goes next. It's a hero. Okay, so I want to either try... Taking a shot with our ranger or closing the gap here against the ranged guy. We'll just chase him down, which kind of leaves us in a weird spot with our rogue being the only melee character that can take care of the other two guys. But um, we'll see. Hopefully we'll take out this leader faster and uh, be okay there. So I think let's go ahead and start with our dwarf. So for our first move, we'll go one, two, three to get in here, and then we'll take an attack at this ranged guy. Come on, buddy. We need you here. We're going with a combat skill of 40. We got a 15, so we're going to hit. Forgot to move the dice forward. Oop, promised that was a 10. 15. Let's roll damage. 1d6 plus 2. A plus 1 for the battle axe, a plus 1 for the mighty blow talent that we took. Damage is going to be 4. Okay. Getting there. He's just chasing this guy into the bushes, making his life terrible. That's it for our first hero. Next up. The bad guy. So we're going to have an enemy adjacent to the hero. That's going to be the next thing. So it'll be this guy. He is going to want to attack, probably. Mm. He's adjacent to a hero. He's going to make room for more enemies to attack if possible. Shove if necessary. I don't think he'd do that. He's adjacent. He's going to roll 2d. Six, red one first. 
All right, so on a five, he's just gonna attack. With the attack, he would do a standard attack. So his combat skill is a 50. He got it with a 37. Let's roll to see where he hits us. And we'll roll some damage too. Hits us on a four. Damage is gonna be D6 plus two, only three. Let's look at the chart, see where the hit lands with a four. All right, so looking at Bomber's gear, we do have a padded jacket, which is two defense, but it's not enough to block all of the damage that's coming in. We'll take a point of durability off of this, and then we'll take one point of damage in our hit point tracker. Back to the bag, we go. Another bad guy. So we need to do enemies that have no space to move full movement or closest here that could charge. I think this guy could charge one. Or no, we moved back just so he couldn't charge, I think. One, two, yeah, we did. But it could go full, full movement. Um, he could go one, two, three, four, full movement and get in as well. Let's just randomize the two with a D6. We could go here. Well, he could charge, but I don't think he could charge through the bushes. I think the bushes are gonna make that difficult. This will be one through three. This will be four through six. Here we go. Four. So we'll say this guy goes, he cannot charge through the bushes. If he overcomes an obstacle here, uh, it would negate the charge. So he'll just use his four movement. One, two, three, four, because he's moving into into some zone of control here. Or one, two, three. It really doesn't. It's technically three. It could be four. I think it's when you move through a zone of control space, not necessarily when you enter it. I'll double check that. But either way, he has plenty of space to get in there. And he's going to roll an attack with his short sword against the dwarf. All right, and it's a 26. I do have some combat skill of 50, so that's plenty to hit. Let's go ahead and roll hit location and damage. Short short is 1d6 plus 2. We'll say the red one is location. Green one is damage. All right, so that's a hit on the legs. Double check the character sheet here. We actually do have some padded pants. We happen to get some leg armor here. The defense is two. The damage is six, so we'll take a hit of durability on those legs. We have two defense, so four damage we'll get through. All right, so reaching back into the bag, one enemy token left, three heroes left. Let's see what we have here. All right, it's a hero token. I think what we want to try to do now is get our wizard to go. It's going to be Monty's turn. And I think what we'll try to do with our first action point is to focus, increasing our arcane arts to 10. Our chance to miscast is increased by 5, so we'll miscast on a, a 90 or above. But what we need to do is we don't need to roll to hit with a magic missile. We just need to make sure that our magic goes off. So we're looking at a CV of 8. Um, but we now have an arcane arts of 70, so we'll subtract 8 from that and go for a 62. And we got a 63. <laughs> so close. So that will not happen for our poor wizard. One thing to note is if a fail cast goes off, you only consume half of the mana that you would have. So it's not all bad. It's not great either. All right, back to the bag. The last bad guy is going to go. That'll be the bandit leader up there. Let's check his card. He would move full movement down to the closest hero. 
Fortunately, it'll be our wizard. One, two, three. And he's going to take an attack with his long sword. All right, so we got an attack coming from the bandit leader. Let's go ahead and roll 2d6 to see what he's going to do. All right, red being a four would be an attack action. And on a four, it's just a standard attack. And here we go. Combat skill 60. And 52, he's going to hit. Let's go ahead and roll location and damage on the wizard. Six legs. Only one damage. Oh, wrong damage. Die, we need a d12. bad a one one damage to the legs do we have any leg armor we do not we'll just take the one damage not too bad all things considered all right so we have two heroes left to go we have our halfling rogue and we have our archer that's all that's left in the bag so who do we want to go with first We'll just go with the archer. Uh, we're loaded up. We'll do an aim action to make our range skill 88. Here we go. Roll coming. Ooh, 36. That's definitely going to hit. Let's roll damage. It's going to ignore one part of the armor that they have, and they have two. So it's 36, but it's 88 minus 15. Yeah, we're still good. The to hit minus is still 15. It's pretty good. But damage is a d10. So here we go. Ignoring one point of armor, so there should be minus one. Damage on the bandit leader is three. So two damage. And then that's going to be it. Spent another arrow. So now the rogue can go. What do they want to do? Right here could power attack, but it leaves them a little bit vulnerable. Uh, we'll just do two standard attacks, I think, on the bandit. Minus five to hit here. The range skill. Sorry, yeah, range skill. Combat skills of 57. Let's band it right in front of him. First one, yeah, 35, that's gonna hit. The short sword, we got 1d6 plus two. Oh, pretty good, six damage. They are wounded, so they can only take one action next turn. Second attack. Yeah, 36 again. Was that the same roll? I think that was the same roll. Damage. D6 plus 2. Four more points of damage. Bring them to 9. Pretty good. Pretty good turn. All right, everything's back in the bag. Four tokens for each side. So he comes up first. That guy. Range guy would go first. And let's look at his behavior. So within... Two spaces of hero, he's got to move with the movement squares away, but remain in line of sight, and he's going to reload at the same time. So that would be two of his actions. Do one, two, three, four, reload. Next guy. Uh, 
hero. All right, so I think what we gotta do first is try Hand of Death. The bandit leader was kind enough to come straight for us. We'll try Hand of Death on the bandit leader with Monty, and then we'll try to close some, some this not close some distance, but make some distance away from us. So Hand of Death is Necromancy. Um, we do have to make a combat skill roll because it's a touch spell. It's quick, so it's just one AP. It's plus 20, but we got to minus the minus 15 for the bandit leader. So it's really just plus five combat skill. And the wizard's combat skill is a 32. So overall, we got to roll under 37 for this to happen. Here we go. 37, oh, minus 7, we need a 30, because of the casting value as well. Miracles are possible. 65, it's not going to do it. All right, it's a failure, so for minus half the mana, minus 4 mana. I guess we might as well try again. I guess we don't have to roll arcane. I'm not sure if we roll arcane arts there still because it, even though the spell didn't go off. It's a good question. Something to look into. Let's just try again with our second action. Or should we just get out of here? I don't know. No, we need to do some damage. So here we go. Same thing. So we're rolling at a 30. Uh, 76, even worse. They're four gone. All right, that's it for Monty's turn. Let's go back to the bag. Here we go. It's another hero. Let us go with our rogue to see if we can't finish off this bit. How many do we have here? Two, three. Eight. We need to do like four damage to finish him off, but we could allow him to not get a turn. So let's try that. We'll try to take two attacks at this guy once again. All right, so we're minus five to hit. So we're going 52 here. Come on, buddy. Yeah, 45 will be plenty to hit that bandit. Let's roll damage with our short sword. D6 plus two. One, of course. <laughs> uh, so three damage, bringing his total to... Uh, wait, no, he was at nine. Three damage is enough to take him out. All right. That's great. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One plus two is three. We took out our first guy. How about that? All right, which is good, because we have one more action point left, and we can move. Try to get some backstabs off. One, two, three, four. Oh, the bandit leader. We're going to gang up on him and hope our dwarf stays okay. All right. Next up. This goes away. We're gonna get another hero. Awesome. All right, so what to do? What to do? I think we'll try to do some damage to the bandit leader, continuing to take out the biggest threat. We'll reload, take a shot with our longbow. So it's 78 minus 15. So it's going to be 63. Armor piercing one if it goes through. 63, here we go. Yeah, an 11. We're going to do it. That's great. So longbow damage is a d10. So this will be at minus one. That's an eight, so seven more points of damage. Bandit leader. 
So he's got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he is over the threshold, half damage, so he is now wounded. And we'll spin another arrow. My bow is unloaded. All right, back to the bag. Oops. The bandit. So it's going to be somebody adjacent. They can make room. Neither of them can really make room. I don't think they'd want to. So we've got the leader could go. He could attack either one. Or this guy could go. He could attack. Let's see. Doesn't need to, yeah, it doesn't need to make room. All right, so let's do our roll again. I think I can't figure out why either of them would go before the other one. Um, so we'll do one to three again, four to six for who goes next. And it's three. So the bandit leader is going to go. He only has one action point. Let's see what he would do. Um, he's adjacent. According to the attack table, he would just attack, I think. And there's no particular reason why. You would attack anybody, I don't think. I'll randomize targets as well. One to three, four to six. Yeah, he'll attack the wizard. All right, so standard attack coming. Red one first. Uh, on a six, he'd use a special talent, but he didn't have one. So just gonna attack and he's gonna do a power attack uh, but it says if he's wounded he would do a parry stance which is gonna make him a little harder to hit if an enemy is in parry stance they can't necessarily dodge or parry so they just are minus 10 to hit all right so that's their go that's all he can do who's next last bandit okay so, uh, this guy, I'm sure, is just going to attack our dwarf friend. So, 2d6. Power attack. So, we'll do a power attack against the dwarf. And the power attack, this gives the model plus 20 to their CS to attack. A hero performing this may not dodge or parry until it's the hero's turn to act again. This isn't the particular section about the heroes. Furthermore, it'll give the enemy a plus 10 chance to hit the hero. An enemy making a power attack will lose its to hit bonus. So their combat skills going for plus 20. Uh, making it 70. So it'll be pretty easy to hit. Here we go. Uh, here's their power attack. And their to hit bonus doesn't change. Uh, oh my goodness, it's an 80. So they miss, even with the power attack. That's great for us. All right, last guy to go. It's going to be our dwarf. We're going to retaliate, hit right back. Okay, so I think we'll just take two standard attacks. We could run up here. This guy's already wounded, but I feel like we we'll want to use the AP if we can to get double damage uh, on this guy. And our to hit bonus isn't necessarily... Uh, gonna take into account this time because um, he powered attack last time and missed. I still can't believe he missed. All right, so two standard attacks coming um, from our dwarven friend. His combat skill is yeah, that's right, it's a forty. I keep forgetting though he does have a BFO, uh, so he's plus five to hit in close combat. And so this will be a 45, and he ignores a point of armor, but we're not using any armor enemies right now. Okay, so within a 45, here we go, first one is a 46. My goodness, that was so close. All right, the first one's a miss, let's do it again. Second attack, uh, even higher, 65. So Neely doesn't do anything. All right, everything goes back in the bag, although this time 
we've got three enemies, not four. So we're slowly but surely getting there. That poor fraud dwarf is not very effective. Here we go. New round. I've got a bad guy. So a ranged user will go. Uh, he will probably just take a shot at Neely because his back. Ooh, should we change facing? Yeah, I'll change facing. I meant to do that. Let's do that instead. So we're not shot in the back. I'm not sure if that matters, but we'll see. All right, so let's make a combat skill check with the bandit. Range skill check, actually. It's only 35. They're not very good at that. But just double checking with their behavior. Oh, first they need to reload. Yeah, they would reload first. Oh, actually, they are loaded because they moved. In. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so let's see. Let's just attack with a 35. First, we got to check to see if they aim. So do a special skill, but can't. Um, they actually would aim first, so it's gonna get plus ten. Give them the forty-five. And with a fourteen, yeah, they'll hit. Okay. So let's roll location and damage. They have a short bow, so it's a D eight. Location D eight. Here we go. Uh, one at five damage. That's a decent hit. We're gonna hit us in the head. Do we have any stuff to block that? We did get a padded cap, but we do get hit in the head. That means sanity goes down. Another point. We're gonna block two of the five damage with two defense. We have the padded cap, so we'll take another durability check. Meaning we'll take three points of damage. Three, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're just under the threshold to be wounded, but that is that bandit's go. All right, I'm gonna start putting the activation tokens out here to show who I've activated. I'm sure that's gonna get tricky. All right, next up. Ooh, another bad guy. We have two that are in combat range already. So let's do our one to three, four to six. Bandit leader's gonna go. He only gets one action. He's in parry stance. But I think that goes away because here's his new activation. And let's see what he does. Roll 2d6. Alright, here we go. Yes, they will attack, and they'll do a standard attack against. Let's pick the enemy. One to three is rogue, four to six is wizard, rogue. They're gonna attack the rogue. We'll say they change their facing to this. At the beginning of their turn. Here's an attack. Combat skill is 60. And they got 38. So yeah, they will hit. Let's do location and damage. All right, so three and three. Three is in the torso. We need to check gear if we had any in our quick slots, but we actually don't for Bomber. And... With three damage, we're just going to bounce off 
two of that because we have a padded jacket. We do take a point of durability and we take one point of damage. He's up nine hit points. All right, that's their go. See what happens next. All right, a hero. So I think we will try to activate Bomber first. He'll move one or one, two, three, four to get behind this guy. Because he's got some back savvy stuff he can do. So I'm not sure if I'm using zone of control movement correctly. I know it's one extra point of movement to move through. To move out is one. I can't remember if to move in is an extra one as well. So it's either one or two to get in, and then two to get through another zone of control. Or but actually, his zone of control would be in front, because he moved facing. So it'd be one, two, three to get where he is. Yeah, okay. Lots of little things to remember. So let's look at our character sheet here. When we backstab, we ignore armor and natural armor when behind, but we do have to hit first. That's the important thing to remember. Combat skill is a 57 in our, gosh, our bandit leader has a lot of to hit changes. Minus 15 here, but we're gonna ignore all armor, which is good. So with combat skill of 57, that means we're looking at a 42 to hit with our short sword. There we go. We can do it. No, we can't. Not with an 82. <laughs> All right, that's it for there we go. Let's see what happens next. All right, so on Monty's turn, I think we're going to go ahead and roll two hand of death checks. And we are plus 20 combat skill, making it 52, but we're subtracting 15 because of the to hit bonuses that the bandit leader gets. So this is gonna be a check of 37. We have two action points here we can try again. First one is a 37, exactly. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, we do have to still roll an arcane arts check to make sure we get that, which is gonna be a 53. My goodness, this is tricky. Okay. All right, just double checking hand to death. Combat value seven. Yep. Arcane 60 minus seven, 53. Here we go. And we got a 90. No, 69. Okay. Ah, oh, so close. So, yeah, not getting it that time. All right. A failure, so we'll get rid of half for mana. And I'm assuming this is how you do it. It's a failure. It, we're not, we failed the cast. Yeah, so this would definitely be half mana. But like on the last turn when we did two failed combat skill checks, I think we would still get rid of half the mana. It makes sense to me. All right, let's try it again. So 37. No, 82. Not going to happen. All right, that's their go. Monty can't do much here. Who's next? Last bandit. Get rid of his power attack. All right, he's just going to take a standard attack. Or two. at Neely. So here we go. All right, four would, yes, indeed be an attack, and this would be another power attack. Okay. So here we go, plus 20. We did it again. Combat skill is 50. The need to roll within a 70. And this time they're going to with a 24. All right, so let's roll location and damage. a three, damage is eight, ouch. All right, let's check armor. Cut that down by 
three, but one durability check goes through. And five damage is what we're gonna take. We are down to 13 from the, down 13 from our 17, so we're definitely wounded now. All right, so we know what this is. Now Neely gets to go. Oh, that one HP stinks. So we're gonna take just one standard attack because the to hit bonus is gone. Neely's in 40 here. And it's a 6. Almost enough to level up. Between a 1 and 5, we would actually be able to increase our skill. But that's definitely going to hit. Let's roll damage. Oh, plus 5 to hit anyway. And we're going to annoy one. Yeah, okay. I like this 1d10 plus 1. I think we've hit with this thing yet, so I couldn't remember. Nope. All right, and we've got four points of damage. All right, everything back in the bag. Just to write damage out. So, first up, hero. All right. Could try to backstab again. Twice. Let's do that. Because then, then we need to start moving towards the other guy. We'll try to backstab with the rogue again. 57 is the combat skill, minus 15. And the 42. Come on, buddy. 38, that'll hit. All right. So damage with the short sword, ignoring armor because we're behind them. 1d6 plus two. Four more damage. Nine plus four. 13. He's got three hit points left. Might as well take another swipe. Let's try it. Again, looking at a 32. Oh, he does have a luck. Forgot to check to see what luck does. So each luck point can be used to alter the course of events. A hero can use one luck point to reroll a dice roll that directly affects him or her. Does that mean an attack roll? I assume so. All right. Let's see if we get that 32. If not, we'll use our luck. 65. Sure. We'll reroll. Use our luck point. Reroll must be taken. It's a three. <laughs> nice. All right, so that is a critical success, meaning our combat skill can go up one. 58. Come on, buddy. We need three points here. Come on, little halfling. So D6 plus two. Gosh, if we roll a one, we get it, All right? Because we're ignoring armor. This is it, we got it. We killed the bandit leader. Yeah, six points of damage, he's down. Okay, good. Two enemies left. Got a hero. All right, I think. How many spaces are we away here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces away. So we can reload with 
Dorlin. Go ahead and attack this guy. And it's the hit bonus. Doesn't count because he powered attacked. Okay. Let's roll. Looking at a 70. Eight. Yep. No modifiers. Here we go. 72. Wow, that was close. Okay. D8. Two points of damage. This guy's at six, so he's wounded. again lost another hero okay next up another hero so I think we try to move or do we just attack with this guy He's looking, he's looking rough. Mm, yeah, we'll just attack with him. That'd be the, not the smartest thing to do. Did it anyway. 43. Neely's combat is 40. Yeah. So no hit. Okay. Who we have next? Bandit. Alright, so he has to reload. Take a shot. The closest guy. Well, actually, let's see. All right, so let's see what they do. They would attack, and they're going to aim. Okay, so they're not going to attack. Reloaded and aimed. What do we have here? Last bandit. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's gonna attack avoiding the table because he's adjacent. Standard attack. Combat skill is 50. He rolled a one. <laughs> wow. He levels up. Good. All right. Let's see her location of damage. Five and five. That'll be enough to take our poor Neely out. Seven total damage coming to Neely at the torso. So minus three, which means four hit. Yeah, 13 was his HP, so he is fortunately bleeding out. So when a hero's hit zero HP, they will be knocked out and start bleeding. They are unable to do anything. To get back on their feet to fight, they'll need a healing spell from a companion, healing potion, if they have one in their ready slots, 
uh, or a healing potion from a companion standing adjacent. Once the battle's over, their companions left standing, one of these may apply a bandage to a fallen friend. So we gotta get over there with Monty. Hero that reaches the zero HP also suffers 1d4 permanent reduction of the basic stat for HP. So we'll go ahead and roll a d4 for that. We'll just go across the board. So strength, con, dex, wisdom, resolve HP. Five, right? No, that's six total, okay. It's gonna be HP. They're gonna take four HP off, so they're gonna go down to 13 total. But we gotta get there first. Bleeding out, okay. If all heroes are bleeding out at the same time, the quest is lost and the heroes die. Um, once the battle is over, you can apply bandage. I don't know if that, like, do we add their... I guess we keep their initiative token in there because they could drink a potion themselves. That'll be very important to know. But only two enemies left in the bag. I like our odds, but we still have to get over there. So see who goes first this next time through. One of the bandits. Wow, range bandit. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. It's not within range of anything. Move up to move its faces to get into a position that increases its odds to hit, including climbing. So we'll need to go one, two, three, four to hit here, right? One, two, three, four, five. That would be 10. And they're loaded, so they'll probably take an attack. They've already aimed at our ranger friend. Let's see what they do this second action here. So they do a special attack and they would also aim, but they can't do that right now. They've already aimed. Actually, they're, that would go away at the beginning and then you get to aim again. I believe how's that, that's how that would work. Okay, back to the bag. Hero. Scared to get my guy in there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. We got far away. We got really far away. All right. Let's just take a shot. Reload. Take a shot somebody we can hit either either person he's got the most health down yep okay 78 is our skill here uh i rolled a nine so it's a little damage minus five Seven, eight. All right, he's got four left. All right, who's next? Last bad guy. He's got one move. He just moved four this way. One, two, three, four. Right. Two heroes left. shoot a flare let's shoot a flare All right so we got line of sight on this guy closing in on us 
We're gonna shoot a flare with Monty. Passing value is eight. So, I need to roll a 52. We could aim. Let's do that first. Or focus. Focus. So I'm gonna need a 62. We're gonna take away 15. From our mana. Come on, buddy. All right. 62. Here we go. Got it. 55. Spell did not go off. Down to 11. Let's roll damage. D8. Of course, one damage. Oh, there's a 10 in there. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> so he would have died, right? One, two. Yeah, he only has 12. He would have gone down here with the arrow shot. Right? Okay. Okay. Hang on. We'll double check all that. But... That's the case. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We could have just shot that flare at this guy instead. Okay. Oof. Head swimming. One guy left. We had plenty of, okay, we had enough damage to take that guy out. With the bow. All right, so our rogue can go, and that's it. He'll just double move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me put things back in the bag. One enemy left. Three heroes that get, or four heroes that get initiative. We do have a bandage. So even though we don't have enough mana to cast our healing hands, we can bandage the bleeding out character uh, at the end here. All right, let's see who goes first. A hero. I think we definitely need to take a shot. We'll reload. Shoot with him. So, need a 73 here. 22, that should do it. D10 damage. Seven, that's what I like to see. With one more, we could have taken him out. So he's going to be at 11. Yeah, so he's going to be at 11. All right, he's got one hit point left. Another hero. We don't have enough to cast Flare, unfortunately. We can't cast any spells. I'll load it again. We'll go there with a the double move.
He's wounded, so he's got one AP. Another hero. So we're gonna move. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's the enemies go. So let's look at his behavior. If within two spaces of a hero, move up to movement squares away, but remain line of sight. So he would go one, two, three, four. That's his one. He's just gonna chicken out. All right. Hero. We get right in there. One, two, three, four. Roll an attack. Come on, halfling. Sixty-six, not gonna do it. All right, who's next? Hero. So that was his movement. We could try to stabilize here. We use a bandage. We can't use a bandage right now. We can only use a healing spell. Nah, thanks. All right, so we'll just say we moved two more. That's way. Last up, bad guy, he's just gonna move away, keeps running around, it's a shame. One, two, three, four. So he only has one action. He's aimed and reloaded. Well, I guess the aim would go away at this point. He's got one hit point left. He's just scared. Then he would go one, two, three, four. And reload. Right. It's getting a little ridiculous. We probably could just end it, I think. It's probably a gimme at this point, but who knows? All right. Come on, buddy. Finish this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's aim. One action, take a shot with two. So we're looking at 88 range skill, minus five to hit, it's 83. 40, let's roll damage. We have to have it because they've got no armor. Right? Yeah, so five damage, last guy falls. So now that we're out of combat, we are able to move Monty over to our Dwarf and make a heal skill check with one of the bandages we have. We have four of them to see if we are able to repair some of the damage that was done to Neely. So here we go. We have uh, a bandage set of rags, which is three separate bandages, and then we have one that is uh, linen. If we heal with the rags, which we'll do first, uh, we heal 1d4. Uh, if we heal with the linen, we go to eight. All right, so first. Rag, need a 60. 73, nope. So the next one, 23. So we spent two bandages and we're able to get back a D4's worth of health to our friend Neely here. Two hit points back. So they're back up to two over there.
Now that we're out of combat too, we can see that we get some stuff for defeating all of these enemies. For the leader, we get 130 XP, as well as a roll on the treasure 2 table. And for the bandits, for all three of them, we get 90 XP each for a total of 270. And then a roll three times on the T1 treasure table. So if you look in the book, there's a section on picking things up. And there's two ways to do this. Uh, one is a hardcore mode, which means you move and you take action points and you take the loot any way you like, putting it anywhere. But you can also do this kind of streamlined mode. And since we're done with the adventure, we'll just do the streamlined mode, which just means we kind of just take our time, look around roll on the tables, and put the equipment anywhere we'd like on our person. So let's go ahead and do those rolls now. Unlike all things, we roll for it to find out what we get when we loot defeated enemies. So we'll go ahead and roll for the bandit leader first with a d10. And we got a four, so that means we found 40 coins. I'll do that three more times, one for each of the bandits. Here we go. First one is a six. That's a bit scrap on him. Second one is a nine. So nothing but scrap. And lastly, a four, which we get a bandage back. So a total of 40 coins and one bandage. The last thing we'll do for this video is look at the aftermath that says with the bandits dead, the party decides to gather their gear and continue their travel. They arrive at the settlement without further issues. Head to the settlement chapter and start by rolling for a settlement event. Then we'll decide where this adventure will take the heroes. So yeah, that's it for our party of heroes. A little dicey there. We lost one, but we we're able to get them back. We all survived, took out some bandits. And that's a little bit of how League of Dungeoneers plays. Really crunchy, lots of decisions and die rolls and rules and tables. And I kind of love it. It's really old school, really um, kind of complicated and a little brain burny, but it's really fun at the same time. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let me know if I missed anything, if you got this game, if you're enjoying it so far. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see more. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.